What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to build a UDP chat in Python. So let us get right into it. So first of all, let us talk about the difference between a UDP chat and a TCP chat. Now, I have a couple of videos on this channel already where I show you guys how to implement TCP chats or TCP chat rooms. And the difference there is that TCP is a connection oriented protocol, whereas UDP is a connection less protocol. In a nutshell, what this means, I have a detailed video on that as well. If you want, go to my channel, type TCP versus UDP differences or something like that. You're going to find the video. But in a nutshell, TCP needs a connection to transmit data. So you have, for example, a client and a server. They have to establish a connection first. So the client connects to the server, the server accepts the connection. Then you have the connection and you exchange messages via that connection. That's the idea of TCP. Now UDP works differently. You have uh, these unidirectional messages that are being sent. So you have a client, for example, in a server, and the client sends a message to the server by specifying the IP address. The server now doesn't have to accept a connection, but the server just receives the message. Then it also sees, okay, it comes from that client. This is the IP address of the client that sends the message. Then the server sends a message back to the client. The downside of that is, of course, that now you don't have a mechanism for controlling uh, or for verifying whether the message actually uh, was received. So when a client sends a message with UDP, it doesn't know that the message was actually received by the server. And also if the client sends out, let's say, 10 messages, we don't know that uh, or we cannot know if those 10 messages were received in the correct order, if the order matters. So. Again, if you want to have more details, you can watch my video TCP versus UDP. I don't know what exactly it's called, but there is a video on my channel where I explain in detail what the difference is between those two. In today's video, we're going to focus on building a UDP chat. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start by defining a server.py file. So this is going to be our UDP server. And um, the first thing we want to do is we want to import the socket module. We also want to import the threading module because we need to have multiple threads running or at least we're going to do it like that. And we're going to import also the queue data structure. So let me just briefly turn off here my audit completion. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to say here, first of all, uh, we want to have a message queue. So the idea is we want to have messages and the messages are going to be sent by the clients to the server. The server will then take them, store them in the queue data structure and then step by step it will broadcast the individual messages from that queue. So we're going to say messages equals QQ and we're going to say also clients is going to be an empty list. This is uh, just the list of the connections that we have. Now we can have more complicated mechanisms here uh, when a client leaves the server and all that. We're going to keep it very basic. When a client sends a message, it will be part of the client's list. That's all we're going to do. Um, and then we're going to define the simple server socket. So we're going to say socket, 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 AF inet. So this is uh, defining an internet socket. And we're also going to say socket dot sock dgram. Now this is different than TCP. So with TCP, we say sock stream, which is a connection oriented protocol. And here we say sock dgram, a datagram oriented protocol. Basically, the combination of an internet protocol, which is datagram oriented results in UDP. So this is how you define a UDP socket. And then we bind this socket by saying server dot bind to the tuple of the string localhost. You can also specify your private IP address if you want to. Uh, in order to get your uh, private IP address on Linux, you type if config into the terminal. On Windows, you type IP config, uh, or you know, depending on your operating system, you have to look up how you do that. Um, but we're gonna use localhost here with a port 9999. And that is how we bind the server. So what we're going to do in the server file is we're going to have two functions, two methods here. The first one is going to be called receive and all this function is going to be doing. This is uh, this will run then in a thread. All this function is going to be doing is accepting the messages, receiving the messages and storing them in the messages queue data structure. So we're going to say while <clears throat> while true, what we're going to do is we're going to say try um, server dot um, receive from so this is the UDP method for receiving and we're going to say here a buffer size of 1024. And the result of that is going to be first of all a message but also the address of the actual client or the actual other socket that sent this message to our server. And then we're going to say just messages dot put and we want to put here a tuple of message and address I mean, actually, 
I don't want to change the code now because uh, I don't want to mess up something. But actually, I think we can also just take this and directly put it into the queue. But I'm going to keep it like that because I have a prepared code piece and I don't want this to be the reason why it doesn't work. But I think you can also directly pass the function. So if this fails for some reason, we're, we're going to just pass. So we're going to just skip and do nothing. And this is the receive method. Now, what we're also going to have is a simple broadcast method that will take all these messages and distribute them to the client. So what we're going to do is we're going to say while true, uh, while the while not messages dot empty. So while we still have messages, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, the message and the address that is next to be processed. So q dot get uh, not q dot get sorry messages dot get like this. Uh, we're going to print the message here, first of all, so we're going to decode it and print it so that we have a server lock. And we're going to also say if the address that we have here is not already part, uh, or how do we do it? Do that not in clients, uh, then we're going to add it to the client. So clients append address so that we know, okay, we have this client here as well to broadcast to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say for each client in the clients list, we're going to just broadcast the message unless and this is a little feature that we're going to implement here unless we have a certain tag that signifies uh, or that signals that the client wants to transmit its username. So we're going to say, okay, if the message don't decode, so if the decoded message starts with and I can choose a tag, I'm going to say here, this is going to be the sign up underscore tag and colon. If this is how the message starts, the uh, client wants to transmit the nickname. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, the name is going to be equal to um, message dot decode. And we're going to use slicing here, we're going to say, okay, message dot decode again, we're going to find the index of the colon. And from that plus one, everything after that will be the nickname. And all we want to broadcast here is we want to say, okay, server dot send to so we want to send from the server, uh, the message that this name, whatever the name is, joint, and we want to send this to each client, like this. Otherwise, we're just going to send the message right away. So server sent to, and we're going to send a message, we don't even need to decode or encode it because it is already encoded, and we need to send an encoded message anyways. Um, and I forgot to actually add a try here. So we want to have all this in a try block. And if something fails, what we want to do is we want to remove the client, uh, we want to remove the client from the clients list. Like this. That's the idea. And now all we need to do here is we need to say t1 equals threading threat with a target being the receive function or the receive method. And then T2 is going to be targeting the broadcast method. And then we're going to say T1 start and T2 start as well. So this is the server file. This is the UDP server file. Again, briefly, what we do here is we create a UDP socket, bind it to localhost port 9999. We have a receive function that constantly gets the messages that are sent to the server, stores them in a queue data structure that allows to uh, that that is uh, reasonable to use when we have multiple threads accessing the same data structure and getting elements out of it, so that we don't have double processing or skipping elements or anything like that. Um, and then we have this broadcast function that constantly takes messages from the from the queue. And if the message has the sign up tag, we say, okay, this is a new um, guy that transmits his nickname or something like that. And uh, otherwise, we just broadcast the message right away. So this is the idea of the server. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to close this and we're going to create a new file called client.py. And we're going to say here, import socket, import threading, import random, and we're going to say client equals socket socket, socket AF inet. So again, internet socket. Um, and again, let me briefly disable here the copilot. Come on. There you go. Uh, and then socket dot sock dgram. Then we're gonna not connect. This is what we would do with TCP, we will now just uh, prompt for the nickname. So we're gonna say name equals input nickname or something like that. This is what we're gonna ask for. And then we're gonna have a simple function called receive. And we're gonna say 
while true, so again, an endless loop, try to receive a message. So get the message from the address is not really interesting. So we're gonna just have this placeholder here client dot receive from we're going to receive the messages that we have here and we're going to print them decoded. So message decode, that's it. If that fails, we're just going to pass. That's the basic idea here. We're going to say now t equals threading dot thread target being equal to receive and then starting the thread. And then we're going to say client dot sent to we're going to send a sign up tag sign up underscore tag. I'm going to have the name here. I'm going to encode this and we're going to send it to in this case localhost 9999. There you go. And then we're going to say while true, we will ask for new input. So message equals input. And if the message is equal to um, exclamation mark Q, we're going to exit. Otherwise, we're going to send the message to the server. So we're going to say client send to name colon message. That's it. And we're going to encode this and we're going to send this to localhost 9999. There we go. And that is the client. All right, so I just saw that I forgot two little things here that are necessary to get this to work. And the first thing is that the client needs to also be bound to a port and a host because the client receives messages from the server. When the server sends a message to the client, the client needs to be uh, running somewhere and receiving messages. And because of that, we need to add the line client dot bind and we're going to bind this as well to localhost for this video. Of course, in reality, you would bind this always on the private IP address or to the private IP address. But in this case, we're running everything on the same system, which is also why we need different port numbers. So the server is running on uh, port 9999 and the client will now have to run on a different port. And of course, also when we have five clients at the same time running on the same computer, they should have different ports. So for the sake of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to say random dot rand int from 8000 to 9000. So this is a port range and we will pick one of the numbers and hopefully it's not going to be the same as uh, the number another client picked. So we have a 1000 values, this should be enough uh, to be able to run two or three clients. Um, but that's the basic idea. Of course, if you run this not on the same machine, but if you have multiple laptops, multiple computers and phones or whatever, in the same home, you don't have to specify different ports, you can just change the local host here to the private IP address, as I said, IP config, if config are the commands. So this is a necessary step here. And also we need to add something to the server file, which I forgot. And this is here when we send a message uh, name joint, we need to encode it. Otherwise, it's not going to be sent because we need a byte stream here. Okay, and one more stupid thing that I forgot about is, of course, we need to say server sent to message and here we need to specify the client. Otherwise, we're sending the message nowhere. So now it should work. Now we have it. And in order to now try this in order to test if this works, we need to open up a command line. In this case here, I'm running the Linux subsystem or the Windows subsystem for Linux on my Windows machine, which is why I'm coding in the Linux uh, terminal here, but I'm going to use the Windows terminal to execute the scripts, you can do it however you want, you can use your Linux terminal on Linux, you can use the Linux terminal on Windows, you can use CMD on Windows, whatever you want, I'm going to use CMD here. And what you need to do once you have your command line open, is you need to navigate to the directory where your, um, your files are. And then you run the server py file. So now the server is running, I open up another CMD, and I go to the same directory. And then I say client py. Now I can register with a username here. So I can say Mike, for example, you can see Mike joint is the message that I get here as the client already here on the server, I get sign up tag Mike. Um, and now if I open up another command prompt, and I go to the same directory. And now I say, uh, client py and I say, I don't know, I'm Tom. Um, then I can say, Hey, uh, or do I have a problem? Come on. 
Ah, there you go. So I just needed to refresh the server. But now if I say hey, you can see Mike said hey, hello, Mike, set Tom. And uh, then I don't know, Mike can say what's up. You can see this works again. This is not TCP messages can be lost messages could go uh, could could be received in the wrong order, whatever if multiple people are chatting uh, with a high frequency. But all in all, this works, you can see that they're using the UDP protocol. This is the server hosting the chat room. And uh, I think with a exclamation mark Q, I should be able to end the whole script doesn't close the window. But yeah, essentially, I think this at least uh, closes the connection, or at least kills the script to some degree. But yeah, that's the idea. This is how you build a simple UDP chat room in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.